It is a market sell-off, and here's what's behind it. First, an economic slowdown that points to recession. The housing market's in deep trouble. The consumer looks to be tapped out. Friday's very weak jobs report convinced investors that the slowdown is real. You know, it didn't help when Warren Buffett revealed he'd sold about half his stake in Apple and that he'd been a net seller of stocks for several quarters. It sends a signal when an investor of his stature cuts his stock holdings. Do you know he now has $277 billion in cash? War talk is also a factor in this sell-off. Iran is considering a direct attack on Israel. It's retaliation for the killing of a Hamas leader in Tehran last week. A wave of rocket attacks is expected. Mayors in Israeli towns have been warned about power and water outages. In Tel Aviv, an underground bunker has been publicly revealed for the first time. It is ominous. And then there's politics and the election. If we're heading to recession, Wall Street doesn't want to hear about tax hikes on corporations or the repeal of Trump's tax cuts. So here we are in white knuckle territory. The Federal Reserve is being hammered for not cutting rates. AI looks like a bubble that's bursting. And the 162 million Americans who have a stake in the stock market are looking at a cut in their net worth. All that, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone else, that is called Bidenomics. <laughs> That is called Bidenomics, and we are very proud of Bidenomics. All right, guys, so I know a lot of us this morning woke up and was like, damn, I'm poor, right? I am poor, okay, because essentially the market, the global markets crashed overnight uh, starting after the jobs report that came out on Friday that showed that we are headed towards a recession, at, at least a recession that they'll actually admit to. Maybe they will, maybe they won't, because I personally believe that the economy has been in a recession for a while. Um, and we know for a fact that the economy went into a recession, I think, last year or maybe two years ago, in which the mainstream liberal media was like, oh, no, the economy is not in a recession. Let's change the definition of recession, right? We all know that a recession is two consecutive quarters of a decline in GDP growth, right? That happened under the Biden administration. We were in a recession. I think we still are. And the mainstream liberal media said, no, that's not true. We're not in a recession. That's just right-wing talking points. The economy is great. Everything is great, okay? So they cite these fake job reports that really don't tell the whole story about what's happening in the real economy uh, because a vast majority of the job growth that is being touted by the Biden administration, the mainstream liberal media, is evidence and proof that the economy is great. Um, well, that comes from government spending, okay? Um, in 2023, at least a quarter of the new jobs created were from the government, and then the rest of them were... Uh, healthcare jobs, which again is just basically government spending. And also you have hospitality, which are lower quality jobs. But when you look at some of the jobs and what's happening in the private sector, we're seeing massive layoffs, okay? Massive layoffs. And why is that? Well, it's because the feds have increased interest rates to highs that we have not seen in a while because of inflation okay they're trying to rein in inflation and what that means is that they have to do what we call quantitative tightening okay that's the policy that they have to pursue they have to try to take money out of the economy and that hurts okay it hurts a lot but again the reason why they have to do this is because of the massive inflation that was a result of all the spending that has been done by the biden administration but hey, don't worry. We have Kamala Harris, who's so great, according to the mainstream liberal media. She's going to help us with this inflation problem. Just listen to her explain it. What else are you going to do to fix this problem with inflation? All right, thank you. Well, let's start with this. Uh, prices have gone up. And families and individuals are dealing with the realities of, of the, that bread costs more, that gas costs more. And we have to understand what that means. That's about the cost of living going up. That's about having to stress and stretch limited resources. That's about a source of stress for families that is not only economic, but is on a daily level, something that is a heavy weight to carry. So it is something that we take very seriously very seriously. And we know from the history of this issue in the United States that when you see these prices go up, 
it has a direct impact on the quality of life for all people in our country. So it's a big issue, and we take it seriously. And it is a priority, therefore. Meanwhile, there was no business person really that close to Biden except for Gina Raimondo. So yeah. this is a nice change of pace. There's a lot of business people surrounding Harris. If you're if you're in the stock market, if you care about your paycheck, you, you, you go with you, you go with Trump. If that's what you do. You do. Yeah, well, he wants to cut your taxes. Well, he wants to cut taxes. Your taxes. My No, my yeah. taxes got raised enormously, well, as no, you know, under the last that. Trump administration. No, I don't no. know if he wants to cut your, no, your no, president. No, 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 no. I'm in a blue state. Oh, yeah, no, forget you're kill, out. They want to kill out. us. I, just, I tried to reorder. I tried to go to They want to put know, us out of business. Pennsylvania. That's what they want to do to us. I can become an Italian citizen by getting rid of the salt tax deduction. Wow. I cannot believe that people are lining up to vote for this individual. Because of feelings, right? Because of, let's make history, right? I get this, uh, these people, oh my God, I just, oh, oh my God, I'm going to lose my mind, right? Just thinking about the fact that you have people who are lining up to vote for this individual who doesn't know a damn thing, okay? I know way more than she does. Clearly, she has no clue what she's talking about when it comes to the economy, and when asked about what she's going to do to help out with the situation, to solve inflation, it's nothing but word salad. But again, this is what people are lining up and voting for. Again, it, 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 I, I'm just... <laughs> I can't believe this country, man. I cannot believe this country. Huh. Anyways, um, so that being said... Trump is branding the stock market tumble the Kamala crash, okay? Because that's essentially what happened. The Dow Jones industrial average plunged 1,000 points this morning. And everybody was kind of suspecting this was going to happen because it started in the Asian markets, right? The Nike, uh, Japan, uh, South Korea, their uh, markets were tanking, okay? Overnight last night, and it definitely affected the U.S. market this morning. Again, a lot of people woke up this morning and was like, damn, I don't know if I can retire yet, okay? I don't know if I can retire yet. It's a problem, okay? But hey, you know, feelings, okay? Feelings, okay? You gotta make history. This is what they're pitching. And it's crazy because they're not asking her any questions. I would love to hear Kamala Harris explain her economic plan. What is she gonna do? I would love to hear her explain it. But again, she never gets asked these questions. So uh, Trump chimed in on this. He says, Markets will never accept the radical left lunatic that destroyed San Francisco and California as a whole. Next move, the Great Depression of 2024. You can't play games with markets. Kamala crash, Trump at it. Again, we're talking about a jobs report that show 114,000 new positions were added to the U.S. economy in July, and that was well below the 175,000 jobs. And what I find hilarious about this is the fact that people are acting shocked by this jobs report. And it's like, no, 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 why are you shocked? They do this all the time, right? They'll come out with these jobs reports, and they'll say, oh, they're so amazing, okay? Biden added so many new jobs to the economy. And then a few months later, they will quietly revise it and say, ah, well, <laughs> he didn't add as many jobs as we said initially, but we're not going to be as loud about that as we were about the fact that, hey, he added so many jobs initially. OK, this is what they do all the time. OK, this is what they do. So anyways, my boy, Charles Payne, who I think is one of the best financial analysts on television, uh, is going to explain the market sell off and how this is connected to the feds and the Biden administration. We're on Fox Business. Morning, Good, Good to morning. Be with you. Good morning. Nice to see you. Uh, there's just so much. Uh, I just want to do say uh, that that statement from the Harris White House or, or from from Harris was really intriguing about President Trump almost bringing us to a recession. Mm -hmm. We were in a recession under President Trump, but it was because of COVID. Here's the thing, though: the actions that were taken led us to the shortest recession in history. This is a different type of recession that we're in the cusp of right now. This is not because of a once-in-a-century element that no one saw coming uh, and had the lockdown in an entire global economy. This is because of policies that triggered 40-year high inflation that have now taken in a massive toll on the economy. Now, here's what's happening. This job report, uh, I, I, this was a referendum, really, uh, the market reaction on Jay Powell. I would say 60% of what we're looking at right now is on Jay Powell comes at his... Uh, his Head of the speak. Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve, uh, you know, their job was to quell inflation and their job is to sort of unwind what they've done. Uh, you know, they're, they're really taking a deliberate steps to, to, to kind of back off on that. 
I think the, another 20 percent would be growth. Growth is slowing a lot faster than anyone thought or expected. Uh, you know, some did. I did. But, you know, the experts you know, yeah. uh, did not. Here's Charles, funny can, thing. I, can I just yeah, tell yeah. you there? Because it seems like the, the economy has just catapulted itself to the top of the list. It had been there before, but really it just seems like it's prominent. And here's the difference. Changes in wages and inflation since the Biden-Harris administration. Inflation's up more than 21 percent. Right. right. And real wages are down right. about 2%. That's real life stuff. That's real life stuff. I mean, and that's why, uh, you know, the, 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 what they print and they talk about in terms of, hey, the GDP was this and that. It does not matter. The main focus here was all of the money that not only did the Biden and Harris pump into the economy, that continue to gush in. And ironically, they brag about things like the Inflation Reduction Act. That's stoking inflation. They brag about all the money that they're giving the world's richest corporations to build factories here. Well, guess what? We gave $8.5 billion in Intel. You know what we got in return? They're going to get rid of 15,000 workers. Great Is point. that smart? Is that really brilliant? Is that what we should be doing with taxpayer money? Stoking inflation and losing jobs? It's nuts. What you're seeing right now in the stock market is what Americans have been feeling for the last three years. It's just a manifestation of it right now. Yeah, I mean, and we always, you know, like to talk about the stock market and the top line numbers. But there are some other data points that really speak to how consumers are doing, like the average person. Like, for example, uh, consumer debt. OK, consumer debt in regards to borrowing from credit cards. Uh, is at an all-time high. Now, again, if Bidenomics was working, you would think that people would be paying down their debt, okay? That Americans would have less debt because you have more money, therefore you don't need to borrow money, or the money that you have borrowed before in the past, you have that money, that extra money to now pay down that debt. That's not the case. People are over-leveraged, okay? And with high interest rates, plus, again, a lot of people being over-leveraged, that's a disaster, right? That is a disaster waiting to happen. And it's only a matter of time before the chickens come home to roost because the economy is built on a house of cards, okay? The average American is not doing well. It's just a fact, okay? But again, it's a fact that the mainstream liberal media doesn't want to acknowledge. And this is why I try to tell you guys all the time about how the media is so complicit in regards to the current situation we're in. If the media was honest, we would never lose an election, right? This election wouldn't even be close. What do you mean? If the media was honest, but because the media is dishonest, right? Unfortunately, um, we're dealing with a situation that, quite honestly, uh, we really shouldn't be dealing with because Joe Biden should have been elected in the first place. Now, when you talk about, again, why is this happening? Okay, why are we in this situation? Well, it's because of the massive spending that was done. Yes, I know Republicans are part of his will, too, in regards to what happened in 2020. But I really do believe that had we stopped spending in 2021 and feds raised the interest rates earlier than they did. I mean, at the time I was like, yo, we're spending way too much money. The feds, you got to start raising interest rates because you're going to risk uh, inflation with this massive federal spending. OK, when you talk about fiscal policy and then when you combine that with a monetary policy of quantitative easing then, yeah, you're going to have a disaster. You're going to have a disaster. But again, Democrats thought that, oh, yeah, we could just keep spending. It doesn't really matter because they believe in modern monetary theory, right? They believe that they can spend as much as they want as long as they just tax the rich <laughs> before inflation catches up. But again, did the Democrats really tax the rich? No, <laughs> they tax the poor through inflation, okay? The rich got richer, okay? The rich they benefit from inflation more than anybody, okay? Because you talk about asset inflation, like the price of housing, real estate, stuff like that. Yeah, the rich benefit, okay? Um, they're doing well. But when you talk about people who don't own as many assets, yeah, they are facing the brunt of the Biden-Harris administration and their policies, okay? So, you know, it's just so funny how we're going into this election and the polls are as close as they are when you have a majority of people in this country concerned about the economy as the number one issue. And you had a guy that was in office in which the economy was amazing, at least up until COVID. COVID was not his fault. I don't care how much Democrats try to gaslight people on what happened during COVID. Again, what happened in regards to the economy, again, really was not on Trump <laughs> again, because Democrats would not have done anything different than what Trump did at that point. Okay. In time in which COVID uh, became a thing. Okay. But before COVID Trump's economy was bumping. Okay. It was bumping. It was on fire. 2020 was going to be an amazing year and Trump was cruising to reelection. 
That's what was happening. But now you got people undecided and on the fence about whether or not they want to continue four more years of Biden, Harris, economic policies, or whether or not they want to go back to what we had under Trump before COVID. Again, it blows my mind. It blows my mind. I don't understand. I don't get it. I don't get anybody whose number one issue is the economy. And you can go into that voting booth and say, hey, I'm voting for Biden and Kamala. It makes absolutely zero sense. And again, this is why I'm not a big democracy guy, right? This is why. <laughs> That's why I'm not. Because again, a lot of people just can't handle the responsibility of voting. Okay? And you're seeing that right now. You're seeing that right now. So how do we, you, I, every American private citizen out there, how do we brace for a pending recession the rather the, than things the, getting well, well, better? Maybe they're going to get a whole lot worse. You use the right word, brace. You have to brace for it, right? I mean, and, and here's what I'm concerned about. Unfortunately, the savings rate has come down dramatically. We're well under 4% right now. More recently, people have started to really scamp. Listen to what corporations are saying. Last week, we had Wayfair uh, talk about the great financial crisis. We had five below saying disproportionately, disproportionately, they've never seen anything like this, where this the weight of inflation has crushed their low-income customers, and they're seeing more upper-income households shop there. A again, a deep discount store. All you can do in this environment is brace for something like this. Well, two things here is Kamala Harris. Uh, she hasn't done an interview yet, hasn't held a press conference. We think we'll get a VP pick maybe within yeah. 12 hours, 24 hours. We'll see. But here she was in Atlanta last week on this economy. Building up the middle class will be a defining goal of my presidency. And yes, it is true that by many indicators, our economy is the strongest in the world. But while inflation is down and wages are up, prices are still too high. You know it and I know it. So who's How do you just lie like that? Inflation is down, wages are up, but prices are too high. Again, how do you just lie like this? The only way that you're able to get away with this type of lie is when you have a poorly educated populace, okay? Because real wages, which are essentially wages adjusted for inflation, when you actually count inflation, uh, the average American is objectively poor than they were when Biden and Kamala Harris took office, right? The average American has gotten poor. Again, I'm not entirely sure how you can say with a straight face that wages are up, right? And inflation is down when real wages are down. Again, this is just, wow, incredible. It's going to give voice to this the best. Wall Street Journal, here we go. Ultimately, the core of this election is about economic issues. This is a Republican pollster by the name of David Winston. Every time you're not talking about that, you're missing an opportunity to engage independent voters. Independents always decide who wins elections. When our poll came out last week in Michigan, Trump led over Harris by eight points on independence. I don't know if it stays that way or if it goes higher. I'm not sure. And, well, the jobs report tells you it's going to stay that way because real life life, what people are enduring, no matter what this administration says, is it, it, it's, it's tough. It really is tough. And by the way, two other things I got to point out. Please. Geopolitical issues are really becoming very frightening. You saw all those planes out of uh, Russia and Tehran over the weekend. Those are the type of planes that carry military hardware. Of course, we moved in a, a battleship and we're moving in another fighter squadron. And Can then, you even imagine how much oh, U.S. defending Israel against a regional war and a war with Iran is going to cost? It's, and, and the I mean, implications, the and implications trillions. in terms of anxiety and fear. And, you know, yeah. these things bubble up. They get bigger. They become larger. You go from a small regional thing. It has been totally mismanaged. There's no foreign policy. The only thing we've heard so far in the last three or four weeks from the, from the White House is finger wagging at Israel. That's not foreign policy, right? And I think it's encouraged that Iran is some of the bad actors. And also the stock market was reflecting a Trump victory, particularly small cap stocks, because they're domestic companies. They have come down dramatically since Harris has gone up in the poll. They have crashed. Well, yeah, I mean, because everybody sees the writing on the wall, right? Uh, how terrible uh, this administration is and their policies. And that's what people are lining up to vote for when they vote for Kamala Harris. But again, you know, because we have a lot of stupid people in this country, they don't understand how this stuff works. They don't understand that a vote for Kamala Harris is a vote for continued inflation, is a vote for more wars, is a vote for more open borders, is a vote for more crime, it's a vote for more chaos and destruction, the decline of this country. That's what it's a vote for.
But hey, you know, feelings, okay? Black woman, all this other stuff that has nothing to do with the actual everyday circumstances of the American people is what the media wants to focus on. And again, that's a damn shame. It's not just the Biden administration that's at fault, but it's also the media as well, too. So, hey, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.